Hi, this is Lucas. I uh, want to go over the uh, procedure for adjusting the bearings on this Clausing 5900 lathe. This is the 12 inch lathe. It's, uh, I don't know, mid 60s vintage, I suppose. That's a real nice lathe. Uh, it does require maintenance once in a while, and uh, this one actually, I could tell the uh, bearings were not at the correct level of preload. Uh, by uh, doing the test they recommend in the manual, which is to mount a, uh, actually, they say a faceplate. I just happened to use my 6 inch chuck. From mounting the chuck and then uh, giving it a turn and seeing how many revolutions you get out of the spindle. Uh, at that point, uh, at the time I did the first test, it was about three revolutions, so I knew it was uh, not insufficient preload, really, insufficient preload on the bearing. So, to get this apart, you, uh, you take an Allen wrench and uh, you take off this, uh, this hand wheel. And I've got a lever type collet closer, so I've got this, uh, this uh, locating nut, they call it, on here, but the uh, good thing, uh, actually don't have to disturb this at all. So we're just going to pull this off. That's the hand wheel. Leaving this installed. I'm going to take the uh, nuts off that uh, hold this uh, guard in place over the outboard gears. And get that out of the way. I'm going to pop the guard off. I'm going to take a look at the at the outboard side. So I'm going to move the camera around now so we can take a look at the adjusting collar that's on this uh, on this bearing. So here we've got the adjusting collar and uh, I've got a lot of the uh, it's my uh, favorite outboard gear lube on here. It's the Napa outboard gear lube but it's actually quite dark. It's, it makes it a little bit hard to see in here but uh, what we have to do next is loosen this screw. So uh, I've got this tightened down with uh, a fairly good amount of torque, so we'll just pop that back a little bit, loosen that up. Then uh, I want to show this wrench. This wrench is a, uh, it's actually a modified spanner, pin spanner. This happens to be a Williams 458. There's an equivalent Armstrong, and I think I've got it up here on my computer. Let me pull that up. Uh, the number is 34-219 Armstrong. So same size. These uh, this happens to be for a two and a half inch diameter uh, locking collar, which is what this is. But the standard factory pin diameter is a little large for the hole that's in the locking collar. So you have to modify this a little bit. I just filed this down to a little under a quarter of an inch, which is the uh, size of the of the hole. So uh, I'm going to pull the pin on the spindle so we can rotate it. You can uh, drop this down in here, run that up to that point, and then all we need to do is put a uh, put a wrench on the uh, in the in the chuck, so we can uh, so we can tighten this up. So I'll just show how we're going to do that. Open this up. And then uh, when I tighten this down, or tighten it up, uh, however we want to talk about it, uh, I just pushed it up and it turned, I'm guessing it turned about, oh, an eighth of a turn. So I turned it up uh, quite a bit, so I got quite a bit of play out of this bearing. Maybe it wasn't quite that much, but somewhere between a sixteenth, let's say, and an eighth of a turn is what I managed to get uh, an additional preload on this bearing, the two bearings actually. There are two tapered roller bearings in this headstock. So that's the, the way that I went about tightening up, uh, tightening up the uh, preload on these bearings. So just uh, putting a, a wrench here in the jaws of the three-jaw chuck and, and torquing it. Once I got it uh, torqued up, of course I have it. I'm just going to have to pop this on now. So we can take this out and uh, rotate it around until we get our uh, Allen set screw Allen, uh, and retighten that locking set screw. So, very simple procedure. It only so this is Lucas signing off.